What's up guys, Evil Deer here, and today I want to give you a little bit of a grammar lesson um, about the accusative case and movement, because this is actually something I've had requested quite a bit from viewers of this channel, and you know what? I figured I'd get it done, get you guys off my back so I can actually get on with the stuff I want to do. No, really, I love you all. I love you profunde. <laughs> okay, so... Basically, when someone learns Esperanto, the first big hurdle they hit is the accusative case. And when they hit it, it's a good pounding if you don't understand grammar. It pounded the hell out of me when I first encountered it. I'm not making sexual references here at all, so just don't be dirty-minded. Okay, so eventually they understand that the accusative applies to the object of the transitive verb, which meant nothing to me when I learned this language. But they get this in their head and they're like, okay, okay, I've got this, I'm on a roll. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, it's applied to people and locations which aren't direct objects of transitive verbs. And they're like, what's going on here? What you need to understand is the accusative case doesn't just apply to the direct object of a transitive verb. There's actually like three big areas it covers. One is obviously the transitive, uh, the object of the transitive verb. The second is the accusative case of movement, the thing I'll cover in this lesson. And the third one is like time, quantities, and stuff like that. And I'll deal with that another day. So movement and the accusative case. The best way to understand this is with a demo. So let's look at um, your standard one that you'll probably see a lot. So, mi iras en la domo. It means I'm inside the house and I'm moving around. Now, it literally translates as I go or I walk in the house. Notice it's in and not into. So, mi iras en la domo means I'm in the house and I'm walking around. But if you then say mi iras en la domon, notice how domo goes to domon, you're now showing movement towards a location, the location being the house. So, mi iras en la domon translates as I go into the house, okay? So, mi iras en la domo means I'm in the house and I'm moving around. Mi iras en la domo means I'm outside the house and I move into the house. So, let's say you're swimming in the ocean. It's a lovely swim and you look down in the water and you notice there's a turtle below you, okay? And the word for turtle is testudo. And you're looking at that turtle and God, does it look juicy. Like, just imagine. No, okay, that's not what this is about. So, you're looking at this turtle and it's swimming below you, okay? It's not swimming anywhere else. It's below you and it's swimming around. So, you'd say, la testudo na ja sub me. So the turtle is below me and it's swimming around. But if you wanted to say that the turtle swims, say, from in front or the sides or above, down under you, you'd say, la testudo na ja sub min. Uh, I am the destination of the movement, okay? So, la testudo na ja sub min means the turtle swims from above under me and la, la testudo na ja sub mi means the turtle is already below me and it's swimming around. Now let's try one more example. Let's say you've gotten out of the water, you've eyed that turtle off enough, and you're walking down the beach, and you notice above you that there's, I don't know, a vulture. I don't know why a vulture is following you. Maybe you're destined to die, but there's a vulture above you, and it's flying around. You know how they do those little circles? So the way to say um, the vulture flies above me, it's not from somewhere else. It's just above me and flying around. You'd say, la vulturo flugas super to me, okay? But if you wanted to then say, um, for instance, you're on the beach and you see that vulture and it's sitting on the sand in front of you and it's eyeballing you like you're my next meal, mate. And then it takes off and it flies above you from, say, on ground level. Then you would say, la vulturo flugas super min, okay? Because you, again, are the destination of the movement. So that's basically it. The accusative case, when applied to something that's not, for instance, the transitive verb or time or quantity based, is implying movement towards something, okay? Now, this is, seems probably a bit confusing at first, but when you think about it, English uses all these weird constructions like in and under or into and then in, and then it's kind of mixed up how we do it, but with Esperanto, it's actually quite clear cut once you've got it down. Shing, 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 shing. Okay, so that's it. If you've liked this video, give it a like, share it around with your friends, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. And just to leave you hanging, Try and translate this one for me. Kai se mi ne vidos vin en la venonta filmo. Mi trovos vin kai mi iras en vin.